Ilhan Omar rallied for Bernie Sanders last night, and you'd think it was a rally in the former Soviet Union. Robert Francis O'Rourke says bye-bye to the presidential race, and a healthcare worker in the UK is out of a job for saying that only women can get pregnant. All that and more, I'm Bobby Eberly. This is a 13-minute news hour. And God bless the United States of America. All right, friends, welcome to the show. I hope you had a great weekend. We're going to dive right into the news and starting with Robert Francis O'Rourke, because on Friday, and you know him, you know Beto, the guy who was profiled in Vanity Fair, the one who invited us to go to his dentist appointments and watch him skateboard because he was too cool for school. Oh, and the guy that was destined to be president, he's out. He's out of the race. He's folded. Here's part of his announcement. This is a campaign. It has prided itself on seeing things clearly and on speaking honestly and on acting decisively. All right, so wait a second. What part of that was actually true? Acting decisively? Speaking honestly? You mean like about taking our guns and stuff like that? Here's more. We have to clearly see at this point that we do not have the means to pursue this campaign successfully. And that my service will not be as a candidate, nor as a nominee of this party. All right, so Robert Francis is out of the race, and the Washington Times kind of wraps up everything that kind of transpired in his campaign from the get-go till right now. And here's their report. It says, Mr. O'Rourke entered the race as a favorite of the new generation of Democratic leaders after mounting a strong challenge to Senator Ted Cruz of Texas in 2018. He raised an impressive $6.1 million in the first 24 hours after announcing his presidential bid. But Mr. O'Rourke quickly squandered the promising launch by putting forward policy positions that were not fully thought out and delivering uneven performances on the stump. The dropout announcement was a clear shock to Mr. O'Rourke's backers at the Iowa Democratic Party and Justice Dinner in Des Moines, where he was scheduled to speak Friday and where his campaign volunteers got out early to plant Beto signs and line up on the street outside the annual gathering to boost his campaign. Mr. O'Rourke canceled his speech at the dinner. So before we leave Beto behind, because again, he's sunk, he's gone he was, it was funny to kind of watch it go, especially with the buildup, especially with almost this coronation. Now, he was the flavor of the month. He was going to save the Democrats from the evil President Trump. And one guy that I just want to mention is Bill Kristol. He is probably the most worthless of the establishment Republicans that writes and comments on TV and things like that. Well, remember Andrew Gillum? All right, so Beto was running for Senate. Andrew Gillum was running for governor of Florida, corrupt and just not a good guy. And here is what Bill Kristol tweeted in August of last year. He says, if Beto O'Rourke and Andrew Gillum both win this year, won't they be the 2020 Democratic ticket? Good call, Bill. Good call. I mean, come on, give me a break. And to go now from more presidential politics, we go from Beto, who's done, to Bernie Sanders, who's almost done. I mean, he is sinking, but last night he held a rally in Minnesota. And as you probably know, Ilhan Omar from Minnesota and other members of the squad like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Rashida Tlaib have endorsed Bernie Sanders. Well, they had a rally last night where Bernie was speaking and Ilhan Omar was speaking. And I don't know if you've ever watched one of these. If you ever watched, you know, a rally from the far left, it is just... It's eye-opening and it's mind-boggling that it's happening here in the United States of America. Take a listen. My destiny, your destiny, the destiny of workers around the world are linked together. And, and these are not radical ideas. All right, so two things. First of all, whenever people talk about, on the far left, when they talk about workers, they're not talking about you and me and almost everyone else, you know, people who actually work. They're talking about a small sliver, a constituency that they try to rally to their side by painting them as the victims, as the oppressed, as and everyone else is the bad guy and they need saving. 
Those are the only workers they're talking about. They're not talking about the vast majority of people who go to work every day trying to provide for their families, trying to save for the future, for education, retirement, all those kinds of things. They aren't talking about those workers, just their workers. And the other thing is, when someone on the far left gets up there in front of people and says, hey, our policies aren't radical, watch out. Okay, here's more. We can't achieve any of these goals if we don't build a movement that is representative of all of our aspirations, all of our pain, and all of our shared trauma. All right, so what is that? What kind of platform is it to idea of bringing America together when your platform is pain and shared trauma? What, what even is that? And here's more from Omar. We must build a mass movement of the working class that transcends faith, age, gender, and background. Oh my gosh, it sounds like workers of the world unite. It sounds like it's straight from the communist playbook. I mean, does she represent America? Does, does Bernie Sanders represent America? And finally, there's just one more clip from Omar. I am beyond honored and excited for a president who will fight against Western imperialism and fight for a just world. So she wants to fight Western imperialism, workers of the world unite. I mean, this sounds like a communist rally. It's just, it's just absolutely nuts. And this is a U.S. Congresswoman, a member of Congress in the United States of America. And then, you know, and then it was just weird at the end because she introduces Bernie Sanders and he walks up to Back in Black by ACDC, which I just thought that was bizarre. So, all right, we're going to move on to what's going on in an example from the UK, which just shows that this whole left-wing agenda is being pushed in country after country after country. So many people watch this show from around the world and they say, hey, we're following what's going on because the same things are happening here. And we've talked about this before with this transgender movement in sports, when men are competing against women, breaking the women's records, winning races, you know, bicycle races, uh, track meets, power lifting, you name it. And the left just thinks that's fine. They're supposed to stick up for women. And yet it's, they have no problem with these biological men entering these events and just twisting biology and common sense. Well, now we see it even coming more <laughs> to the forefront with this whole idea that the left believes that men can actually get pregnant, that women aren't the only ones. They don't have a monopoly on it. Men can get pregnant and give birth. And if you disagree with that, you're out of here. So, and this is what happened in the UK. Here's a story from the Washington Examiner. It says, a birth coach in England resigned from Dola UK an industry charity, after the group reprimanded her for asserting that only women can give birth. Lindsay McCarthy Calvert, 45, was a spokeswoman for Dola UK, but has stepped down from the organization, according to the Daily Mail. McCarthy Calvert accused the charity of abandoning her over criticism from a small number of transgender activists offended by her social media posts. All right, so she makes a post on social media, and we'll get to that, and this you know, very vocal, very radical sliver of the population complains about it, and her organization sides with them, exerts pressure to the point where she felt she had to leave. So here was the deal, okay? We have a cancer research organization in the UK, and they posted an advertisement about screening, all right? And they said the screening was available to everyone aged 25 to 64 with a cervix. All right, that's who is eligible. Not women aged 25 to 64, simple way of saying it, the way we've said it for, you know, decades and decades when you talk about something like this. No, not women 25 to 64, but everyone. Everyone 25 to 64 with a cervix. So she got on Facebook and simply pointed out the nonsense. And here's what she said. She said, I am not a cervix owner. I am not a menstruator. I am not a feeling. I'm not defined by wearing a dress and lipstick. I am a woman, an adult female. McCarthy Calvert wrote in response, women birth all the people, make up half the population, but less than a third of the seats in the House of Commons are occupied by us. A number of activists responded to McCarthy Calvert's post, accusing the birth coach of making offensive statements 
towards transgender people. Some asserted that being a woman is not necessary to become pregnant and have a child. So there you see it, and it just shows you what's going on, not only in our country, but around the world. <laughs> and I just, again, it just goes back to the screening. You know, it's open to everyone with a cervix. It's just bizarre. She pointed out how crazy it is, and she's the one who's out. And again, you know what's happening here too. You see it all the time. We're going to keep on the issue because it's just outrageous, and hopefully people will get upset enough to call the left on it because that's the only way they back down is when we fight back. And finally, I want to talk to you about what happened this weekend with Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez because apparently she's a big advocate now of law-breaking and anti-police rallies, and that's exactly what she was involved in this weekend, and it's just, it's just so bizarre. There was a protest in New York along the subways where people were jumping the turnstiles, getting on the subway without paying just simply blowing off the fee and just a bunch of people. And we'll show you some video on that. Here is what Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez tweeted about it. She says, ending mass incarceration means challenging a system that jails the poor to free the rich. Arresting people who can't afford a 275 fare makes no one safer and destabilizes our community. New Yorkers know that they're not having it and they're standing up for each other. Standing up for each other. I mean, what does that even mean? You have a service, the service has a fee, and she's encouraging people to just ignore it, to not pay it. I mean, what's next? Go into the store and just take what you want? I mean, don't pay for that either? I mean, I don't, I don't understand it. And here's a report from Fox News. It says, Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez on Saturday gave her backing to a New York City anti-police protest in which demonstrators jumped the subway turnstiles and yelled anti-cop slogans to protest a crackdown on fare evasion and allegations of police brutality. In the video, protesters are shown helping each other jump turnstiles without paying the fare, while others are holding signs with slogans like no cops, no fares. One strap hanger who did choose to pay the fare can be heard being yelled at at the protesters. Now, as the news story points out, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez supported this thing, but she didn't, she didn't, and she included a video, a clip which was since removed, and we'll show you some, some of the action that was going on there. But she didn't include, you know, other videos that showed people yelling slogans like, don't let the pigs touch us, or hit them, or punch that cop. This is the kind of thing that she's supporting, and take a look at some of this footage. So really nice. That's the way to support the community. That's the way to set the ex an example as a lawmaker by supporting lawbreakers. <laughs> I mean, what what is that? It just it makes no sense at all. And yet she's out there killing jobs in her community, supporting lawbreaking, anti-police. It just this is who they elected, and hopefully she's in there for just one term because the people in her district have to believe that they can get better representation than this. When you have people that don't even support the laws and suggest that it's okay to break them, I mean, what's the limit? Where do you draw the line? So anyway, folks, that's our show for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe. And when you do, please hit that bell so you'll be notified. And we'll see you next time. I'm Bobby Eberly. This is the 13 Minute News Hour. Okay, friends, just a little reminder before you go, and no, this does not count against my 13 minutes. Please hit the subscribe button below and tell your friends. And if you happen to miss our last show, you can check it out right here. And also for great conservative news and commentary, please check out GOPUSA.com. All right, folks, we'll see you on the next show. Have a great day.